Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to plant up our savanna urns up here by our front entrance for fall. I've got a lot of pretty things just hanging out over here. We've got some ornamental, I think this is this cabbage or kale? One of the two, ornamental kale. Um, there are some yellow moms, orange violas, some glacier ivy, and some lobularia or alyssum. Uh, I think for our centerpiece, we're going to actually go out to the garden and cut some corn stalks and use those as our centerpiece rather than using a plant. But you guys, the plants that we had in here this year were phenomenal. I think it was my favorite arrangement up here to date. I mean, I love the pots. You start with a good piece like that, and then it's hard to not love whatever you put in them. Um, but we ended up putting in a lot of big plants, and I didn't know how they were going to do because, I mean, this isn't a super huge reservoir. They're large diameter, but the reservoir is not very deep. So I had three toucan coral cannas in the center, three plain the blue salvia, two gallardias, three super tunia bordeaux. <laughs> um, it makes me laugh even thinking how much I st stuff I put in there. A red hawk sweet potato vine, a um, nasturtium. I think that's it. Anyway, they got massive and they were glorious. Full of color, beautiful. Everything kind of got to its full size, even though it had a restricted root room to grow. Um, but our last storm, which was like maybe a week, 10 days ago or so. We had 50 mile an hour wind gusts for about 24 hours. And you'll see when we got to cut corn stalks, how it ravaged my corn, it ravaged our sunflowers. And that's one thing about using, you know, cannas and grasses, tall things in containers, if they're not protected by anything and you get a big windstorm, sometimes they're susceptible to wind damage. They were just looking a little bit weary after that storm and just kind of had it. We've had a couple of cold nights too. So we decided to clean those out and start with some fresh stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we've got soil in the gator already. So I think what I'll do is fill these up with soil and then we'll head out to the garden and get our centerpiece corn stalks. So sometimes when I clean out my summer plants out of my containers, there's still at least enough soil to leave at the bottom of the container and I just top it up with fresh because fall plants don't need as much nutrients. It's not quite as important to use fresh soil. Um, but there was no soil left. <laughs> like. It was all a huge root ball. So we are starting with 100% fresh here. And this is our drip line right here. It just comes uh, up through the drain hole. And then when we're all done, we'll coil this drip tube. It's got the emitter holes every six inches. Worked great for us this year. Oh, Aaron, you were right. <laughs> I told Aaron, it's gonna take three bags for sure. He said, I don't even think it's gonna take two bags. And I think you're right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think this is a product of a pallet of a fork. Yeah. Were you moving the, the pallet of soil around? <laughs> it looks like a fork size right there. I've been there, done that down at the garden center. Okay, so a little over one and a half bags. And this is probably gonna be our only project outside today because it looks really overcast actually really smoky. The sun is supposed to be right there and it's just it's pretty it's pretty smoky out. All right containers are full of soil so now we're gonna head out there where my corn is. So my poor corn, it's gone through so much out here. In fact, I had to come stake up big sections of it uh, earlier on because we had a storm earlier that had 70 mile an hour wind gusts and the corn was just laying flat. So I came out and put these ranch panels up and then just individually bundled up corn and tied them off. And some of them stayed upright, which is perfect. So I can do some upright corn bundles around the house, but some of it is just laying flat. So that's what we're gonna cut today because I don't need super long corn stalks. They just need to be like this big. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut my string. I'm gonna lay it on the ground so I'm ready. It's kind of a perfect way to utilize these shorter broken ones. I want it to be fairly substantial I think I'm going to get a few more and this will make up one bundle for one of the pots. Oh, this looks so pretty. There's really nothing like harvesting your own corn because when you buy corn stalks at a farm stand or at the store, it seems like the tops aren't very nice. Like they're always kind of windblown and really thin. But when you save your own corn, 
it always looks so full and gorgeous. I love it. So I've got my string right here. I'm not gonna cut these to size like height wise until I get them over to the pots, but I can lay this right down on the string, kind of arrange them a little bit. Should they need arranging? Then I'm gonna tie them off here. Isn't that pretty? I'm excited about this. Okay, so we've got our two bundles. Now I'm just gonna dig a well in the center here. Well, I'm gonna probably need my Falcos here. I'm gonna dig a well just like I'm using this as a centerpiece, like I'm planting them, so they're anchored a little bit. You know, I said that the corn went through a 70 mile an hour wind gust, so did these. They both went through it. I think that, that's just a little bit more exposed than these pots are, but that last storm just did these pots in. Okay. So height wise, I'm gonna cut off just a few inches here. And we can fluff all of these out and I can also slide more down in if I feel like, cause as they dry, they're not obviously dry yet. Um, they will shrink a little bit in size, which means I'll be able to fit more in if I feel like it's not quite even. It's looking pretty good though. I really like it a lot. You know, Aaron just suggested maybe running a dowel like all the way through the drain hole because the drain hole on these containers, are, it's huge. So I could run a dowel all the way down to the ground and then tie the corn stalks off to that. I think that's a really good idea. But I do feel like I have so many plants here that once I have them all planted, I think it'll be pretty secure. All right, the centerpieces are in place. So I think what we're gonna do is speed up the rest of the planting process, and then we will take a closer look. done and I think they turned out really sweet. I ended up not using the Glacier Ivy because I set the pot in there just to see what it would look like and it kind of made it look a little bit messy and I really just wanted a clean edge. You know the Lobularia, I'm not expecting a ton of growth out of any of these things, it's just kind of how fall containers go, but it might bulk up a little bit. It may have enough heat left. We've probably got another month or so of pretty warm days. Um, so this might kind of grace the edges here, but I really just wanted to be able to see the beauty of these pots. And while I really enjoyed the summer flowers, they were things that got huge and like to the ground, so we couldn't really see this for a few months. Um, I also went out and picked my first two pumpkins. So we haven't harvested anything out of the pumpkin and squash patch yet because I checked on them a couple days ago and I felt like the ones I looked at weren't cured quite enough yet, they weren't quite ready. But I found a couple with some really great stems. Um, and that's just super exciting. We are planning on doing a harvest video here pretty quick in that area. But corn stalks as our centerpiece, they look awesome. I love it. And uh, I'll watch, watch them pretty close, you know, once they start to dry. And if we get some more big wind storms, I'll just make sure that, you know, I don't need to add more or add more support for them. Um, ornamental kale called Coral Queen. And then we've got, these are a perennial mum. They're called Morgana Yellow. And then we've got the Viola's Penny Orange, and I'm actually happy because I've had these in the greenhouse for a while and they've gotten quite tall and a little leggy, but that worked in my favor in this arrangement because they're actually sitting taller. Like that root ball is completely buried in soil, but we're still able to see it up above. I love that. And then this is a Snow Princess Lobularia right there. 
So they're really pretty and I'm really happy with how they look. Now we aren't running our drips as often as we did before, which might be fine. We'll probably run them every few days. I'll water them in today and they probably, because we're getting so cool at night, like low 40s, um, that I probably won't have to water them but every two or three days. So I'll just be out here checking on them periodically. Um, but they should provide color for a really long time because even the mums, even though they've got some color on them, they've got a ton of buds as well. And I typically don't plant the full, in full bloom mums that you see at the garden center or at the box store or wherever, um, because when they're in full bloom, like from side to side and all the way, the whole dome is in bloom. Oftentimes that doesn't last long enough and it doesn't get you through the fall. And I always feel like my fall pots start looking a little bit shabby, um, like midway through, like I need to replace them. So I always try to find mums that have a lot of buds left on them still as well. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm super excited to even amp this up more with more pumpkins and squash once we get the harvest done. So we will show you updates once we do that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.